Okay, good morning, everyone. Good to see you this morning, if you would. Uh, pardon my voice this morning. I've been had a naggy cough for the last two or three days. My voice is kind of hoarse, so help me out here this morning. I'll try not to cough through the uh, singing this morning. If you would, let's, uh, let's all stand to page 224, please. We have a couple of requests this morning from a, from a lady in our church, or our class. So page 224, we'll sing the first, second, and last verse. Holy, holy, holy. Again, page 224. <clears throat> <clears throat> Well, good morning, everyone. We're certainly glad to see you this morning. Ones that are home, we're glad you tuned in as well. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer and let's ask God to bless the day. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the day that you have given to us to come to your house and to worship you and, and to thank you and praise you for all that you have done. And Lord, uh, what you're going to do in our lives and and Father, we just pray that your will will be done this morning. In Sunday school hour, you would bless it. And Lord, the morning preaching, the evening. And Lord, we just pray for a great day today that you would just lead us and guide and direct us and watch over us, keep us safe. And Lord, I just pray that your will be done in our life. Ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Jim, if you'll come, we'll take our offering. Pray for the offerings, if you will, that the Lord's will be done concerning that. And Jim, would you pray, please? Amen. God bless you as you give.
Okay, if you would, turn to page uh, 305, please. Page 305. We'll sing the first and last verse. Praise him, praise him. We truly, truly need to do that, that's for sure. Page 305. <coughs> praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. <coughs> Wonderful love proclaim, hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory, strength and honor, give to his holy name, like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children in his arms he carries them all day long <clears throat> praise him praise him tell of his excellent greatness praise him praise him ever in joyful song praise him praise him Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, heavenly, <coughs> loud with hosannas ring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious our <coughs> glory unto the Lord belong praise him. praise him tell of his excellent greatness praise him praise him ever in joyful song all did a good job. This very good job. Help me. Sorry. Sorry for my voice. Thank you, Brother Dave, Cindy. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. Well, we have some prayer requests that uh, we need to uh, think about and pray for during this week. And and uh, Becky Summers has a virus. And so I uh, pray for her since Wednesday, I guess. And so just continue praying for her. And then, of course, we've been praying for Wanda Clark for a number of weeks and months. And so uh, just continue praying for her, if you will. And then uh, pray for Brother Cross. Uh, pray that his uh, uh, pain would uh, subside. And, and they are thinking that it might be a leaky aorta. And so uh, they'll be going back in and trying to rectify that. And uh, he is uh, uh, doing very well as I talked with him on Friday. And, and so uh, uh, he has lost a lot of weight, of course, and, and things like that. And, and uh, he was concerned about his uh, muscle tone. And, of course, uh, you know, if you're laying around and things like that in pain, you do lose it. And it just takes time to get it rebuilt and, and, uh, and things of that nature. And so uh, uh, pray concerning that, if you will. And then also uh, Michelle Sims, uh, continue praying for her. I had cancer for a long time, and, and so just continue praying for her. Then uh, Wednesday night, uh, Kara Thomas. Uh, had was going to go to Lexington to see the cancer doctor, and I don't know the result of that, and so I just pray for that. And then uh, Riley New uh, is having seizures, and and so pray for him if you will. And then B's had a rough week uh, as far as pain is concerned, and so pray for her if you will. Mike Hopper. Continue praying for them. Sandy, pray for them, if you will. Henry and Cindy Reese. Uh, have you got a job at home yet? Not yet. Not yet. Continue praying concerning that. I know that's a real, 
uh, on her heart and something that needs to be done. And so just do that, if you will. I continue praying for our church, pastor and leadership, uh, that the Lord's will will be done. And, of course, take care of finances and, and things like that and praying for one another, uh, praying for our shut-ins. Uh, that the, the Lord's will will be in, in their life uh, being done. And, of course, uh, we want you to pray also uh, concerning today. I mean, even in the morning service and the, the evening service, we ask that you would uh, just continue praying concerning that. Make it a matter of prayer and that people will come uh, back into the house of the Lord once again. And, of course, then pray for our country, uh, President, uh, all the leadership of our country, state of Indiana. Uh, pray for uh, our state. Going to have a, a new governor uh, being elected th this year. And so uh, pray concerning that, if you will. Uh, pray for the policemen, military, as always. We want you to continue praying for them. And then our missionaries. Uh, pray for them. Uh, last week we uh, had uh, Banda. Uh, he's here in the States and, and having some problems with heart, heart problems. So make it a matter of prayer that he'll soon be back on the field. And then you have a letter from uh, Houston, uh, Francis Houston. And so I want to read that, I'm sure. And so those are the announcements or the prayer requests that I have. And just uh, continue praying. Do we have any new uh, in this section? Yes. Jason, Jason Kidder, okay, pray for him, cancer, and so, uh, anybody else in this section? How about in this section? Anyone? How about in the far section? Anyone? Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for being able to approach your throne once again, and Lord, I just pray that your will will be done in the, the lives of the ones that we have called their name uh, this morning. And, and Lord, uh, we know that you are a prayer answering God, that you heal the body. And Lord, uh, that uh, is able to do all things and do it well. And, and I just pray for the ones that are, are having a long issue, a, a real battle with uh, health issues and and Lord, I pray that you might encourage them and help them. And, and Lord, uh, build them in the faith. And uh, Lord, keep them close to you. And, and Lord, help them to realize that you do care for them. And Lord, that you are working in their hearts and lives. And, and Father, we just pray that your, your will will be done. And ask you to bless and and lead us and guide and direct us today through the Word of God. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, turn in your Bible to John chapter 13. And I believe we left off of verse 12. And uh, you know, I, I see here in verse 12, uh, we find that the, the, the Lord is going to uh, explain uh, what he has done. Uh, to the disciples and for them. And so uh, we see that, uh, uh, first of all, uh, I want you to see something again, uh, where that, uh, and, and I believe that this is uh, an important thing uh, to remember. Uh, it says there, uh, so after, in verse 12, after, uh, so after he had washed their feet and had taken his garment, and so here we see that uh, you'll remember in verse 4 uh, where that he lay aside his garment and then it took upon himself as a servant. And we explained that to you very well. Now we see here he has 
uh, taken on, up on his garment or put on his garment. And, of course, he is no longer uh, going in the capacity of, of a servant. Uh, we see now he is going into deity. Uh, he is God and, and in the flesh and things of that nature. And so I wanted to bring that out to you because the very fact the things that we're we'll going to be dealing with is doing uh, not on, uh, no longer as a servant, but he is a God or man, a God-man and, and things of that nature. And so I wanted to uh, bring that out to you. Uh, but it says, uh, and then, of course, sit down. That means that he was finished with the servant uh, upon this earth. Uh, he was going to go into another capacity now in deity and all like that. And then he says, uh, know, ye, uh, know ye what I have done to you? Do you realize what I've done to you and for you? Uh, and, of course, uh, we see that, uh, you know, a lot of times they didn't, they didn't understand uh, at this particular point. But it says uh, in verse 12, uh, 13, it says there in, in verse 13, and so we find here that it says, You call me Master and Lord, and ye say, well, for so am I. And so here we find uh, in this verse, the Lord is reminding them of their confession. He is reminding them of their confession concerning him. Now, he, he, uh, he did not say, I am your master and Lord, but he said, ye call me. And so there is a difference of uh, where that uh, uh, the Lord can uh, call out and say, I am your Lord and ma uh, Master and Lord. Uh, but here the confession is made, and, and they uh, have been put on the spot now of calling him uh, the right way. And, of course, we see that the Master, uh, as I think I br brought out to you, maybe last week very quickly, uh, that it means teacher. Uh, he has been teaching them uh, for three years. And, and uh, we see that uh, it's, uh, and of course, as he taught them, they have learned uh, to uh, look at him as their Lord, uh, uh, obeying what he had instructed them as far as they could understand the things that was taking place. And so the Lord reminds them of their confession uh, concerning him. And, uh, and of course, uh, uh, you know, this is a good start uh, for the, uh, anyone that is saved uh, and, and uh, re uh, you know, just recently saved. Uh, just look at the Lord as a teacher. Uh, but we see that there comes a point in time uh, when that is reversed, and we'll see that in the next uh, in the next session, uh, where that or in the next uh, verse, uh, where we see that the Lord is changing uh, from a master to Lord. But it says, "You call me master and Lord, and you say, well, for uh, so am I." And and so uh, we see that uh, the good start that they're making, and they're obeying what the Lord has told them. And, of course, that's the first step, of uh, recognizing who he is as master and you're willing to listen to him as a teacher. And then uh, after a while, you come to recognizing him as Lord. And when that takes place, then you are to uh, obey him. You are to obey what he would have you just do and, and things like that. And, of course, uh, we see that here in this verse of scripture, it says you call me master, and of course meaning teacher, and you call me Lord, uh, that meaning uh, obeying what the Lord would have you to do. And then look at verse 14, if you will. I don't know if my is going to respond here or not. It's not moving. Well, looks like I'm going to have to uh, go to the... I always carry this just in case, 
uh, for the simple point that uh, I know uh, that it probably um, will go berserk one day. And, and so we see that in, in verse uh, 14, if you uh, care to look at that, it says, if, then, if, uh, the, if I then, your Lord and, and Master, have washed uh, your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. And so here we find in this verse of Scripture, uh, it tells us uh, if, if, he says, if I, uh, if I then, uh, uh, and of course he doesn't say I am, uh, your master or Lord or whatever it would be. He, he shows them that this is what they are saying. And you know, it's always a good testimony for us uh, to who, who Jesus really is and to tell people about that. And so in uh, verse 14, uh, he just simply said, if I then, and then he goes on, and by the way, we find here, you'll notice that the order uh, 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 is being changed. The order of the disciples' confession is being changed. In verse 13, we saw where it says, a master and Lord. And now we see that in verse 14, he begins to instruct them about uh, who he really is. And so uh, uh, the the. Uh, the disciples has heard him as their teacher and of course later they become to know him as Lord but now we see the Lord is reversing this very thing and he's coming and says Lord and Master and of course the Bible tells us very clearly from that uh, that there comes a point in time uh, in a Christian's life when they have to surrender to the Lord. Have you ever surrendered to the Lord? Or are you still looking at him in the light, in the way that you did? Has he, come, has he become your Lord? And of course, the Lordship of Christ is spoken throughout the Word of God. And there has to be a time in your life when you surrender uh, to the Lord, as these disciples are going to have to surrender themselves uh, to the Lord. And, of course, uh, the Bible telling us uh, that surrendering to the Lord, and, of course, uh, by doing so, uh, they're going to take his yoke upon them and, and submitting to him in all ways. That's what we find uh, surrendering is, submitting to the Lord in every area of our life and, of course, uh, taking his yoke upon him, becoming a yoke fellow uh, with, with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, if you want, in your uh, turn back to the book of Matthew, if you will, Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. And uh, notice, if you will, and where that it says in verse 29, take my yoke upon, uh, upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for, uh, unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so here we find uh, the Bible telling us there has to be a time when we yoke up with the Lord and yoking up with the Lord. And of course, uh, before, uh, before he is going to uh, go any farther and to teach the disciples he has to be Lord of their life. They have to surrender to him. And that is so true in us today. Uh, if we expect the Lord to teach us, we're going to have to surrender to him and where that he is going to uh, really uh, teach us the truths of the word of God. And, of course, we see that uh, we must surrender uh, to the Lord and they also. But look, if you will, in the latter part of verse uh, 14, where it says, uh, I have washed your feet, ye also ought to have washed one another's feet. Do you see a, a difference in the tone here that, that the, the Lord is making? He says, ought. He says there, 
uh, wash your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Now, what does the word ought mean? It's a past tense. In other words, he is telling them, you ought to have been already washing the disciples one another's feet. You ought to already been doing that. And so that's past tense. And, and of course, uh, uh, if you would look, look back in the Luke chapter, uh, chapter 13, uh, if you mind uh, turning back there, uh, it did take a little, a little bit longer uh, this way than it may uh, otherwise. But uh, Luke chapter 13, the Bible tells us in, in uh, verse 14, uh, where it says, And ye rulers of the synagogue, uh, answering with indignation, because that Jesus has healed on the Sabbath day, and saying unto the people, Therefore six days in which, uh, which men ought to work. In other words, they were not to work on the seventh day or the Sabbath day. That ought to have already been, been taking place. Uh, and then, of course, uh, what they're saying here is uh, that men ought to work. Uh, then, therefore, come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. And so here we find that uh, Jesus was actually uh, healing on the Sabbath, as we know. Uh, uh, earlier in the book of John. We n know that to be so. Uh, but he said, they ought to work, but not on the Sabbath. And so we see that's past tense. And we find here that the disciples ought to already have been doing that because the Lord has uh, taught them uh, to be uh, doing, that doing that very thing. And so uh, ought means uh, they ought to be expected to be washing their feet already. It's something that they ought to be doing. And of course, you know, there's things uh, that as a Christian, we ought to be doing. We ought to be doing. Uh, and of course, uh, we already know that we need to do them. Uh, and of course, uh, and we all, all uh, have uh, done that already. Uh, but there's a time coming uh, when uh, we have to start doing it. And here we see the disciples are not quite ready uh, to wash uh, the disciples' feet, one another's feet. Uh, and, of course, uh, there is a reason for that. And look, if you will, going back into uh, Luke chapter, uh, chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, uh, where the uh, Bible telling us Luke chapter 22, and notice, if you will, in verse 23 and 24, it says there uh, in verse 23, and, and, and be, uh, then they begin to inquire among themselves which of them it was that they should do this thing. And, and then in verse 24, and there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted uh, the greatest. Now, here's the reason why that they were not willing to wash no, uh, their uh, other's feet. Because everybody wanted to be the greatest. They wanted to be number one. And so, if everybody wants to be number one, then... Uh, there is no possible way uh, that they're going to uh, 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 really uh, uh, humble themselves to wash uh, someone else's feet because they thought they were the greatest and they were the best. And, of course, we know that that is not so. Uh, and, and the scriptures tell, uh, tell us here, uh, the, uh, tells us why they... Uh, didn't do those things. And then look at verse uh, 27. Luke chapter uh, 22 and verse uh, 27 where it says, uh, uh, whether, For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat, but I 
but I am among you as he that serveth. And so here we find the Bible telling us uh, that, they, that the Lord is uh, telling them, well, if I'm the greatest, if I'm the Lord of your life, and I can become a servant, then you ought to be able to do that as well. What the Lord was doing here, he was putting them to shame. And, and of course, uh, you know, uh, the main thing is uh, included in, in the washing the disciples' feet. And, of course, uh, uh, washing the disciples' feet, first of all, uh, they were to imitate the Lord Jesus Christ as a servant. But they were unwilling to do that. They just simply would not do that. And, of course, uh, you'll remember uh, Galatians chapter 6. Uh, if you uh, uh, turn there in verses uh, 1 and 2, uh, it talks about bearing a burden, bearing one another's burden. And they were not willing to do that. They were not willing to uh, look at other people in a way that they would bear the burden that they would uh, do anything for them because they were great. They were the greatest. And, of course, uh, the Bible telling us that we need, as God's people, to bear one another's burden. That's part of feet washing. That's part of the, the, uh, the instruction that the Lord was giving uh, to the disciples, humbling themselves and become a servant, bearing one another's burdens and all of that and that is, goes along with it. And, of course, uh, he was just simply telling them they needed to wash one another's feet. And, of course, uh, you'll see in John chapter uh, 13 and verse, uh, uh, look at verse uh, 34, if you will. He says, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. And so in order to love one another, they're going to have to humble themselves uh, to the point where that they're willing to do what the Lord would have them to do. And, and of course, uh, and the, he goes on to say in verse 35, By this shall all men know that you are my disciple if you have love one, uh, one to another. And so here we find that they simply were not willing to do that uh, at all. And, and you know, uh, as we uh, finish up on uh, foot washing, uh, you know, if all that you get out of it is, is where that most people get, come to the point and say, well, the Lord has made a new, uh, for a, a, a new covenant for us to follow, uh, and, and, of course, uh, that would add to baptism and the Lord's Supper and feet washing. But that's not so. Uh, if that's all you get out of this, uh, then you have certainly uh, missed the mark. Uh, and, of course, uh, we see that uh, the Bible telling us that we ought to uh, do those things and, and keep them uh, uh, looking at them from the viewpoint of what the Lord is teaching here. Now, notice, if you will, in verse 15, uh, where it says, For I have given you an example that you should do as I uh, do to you, uh, have done to you. And so here we find in this verse, the Lord is giving them an example, giving them an uh, example. And what was the example that the Lord gave? If you go back and read all of what we have as far as feet washing is concerned, you will see the example was, first of all, humility. That's what the Lord was trying to get across. Of course, the Lord knew their thoughts. He knew that they were all at odds with one another, uh, that they were not agreeing upon uh, things. They all wanted to be number one. And so they, uh, the Lord gave them an example of just being humble. Humble before uh, others and, and doing what the Lord would have us to do. Uh, and humility is a, uh, is a uh, great thing uh, for the people of God uh, to take, uh, being humble. And then, of course, we see being an example uh, as a servant, a true servant of God. 
and, and of course, uh, serving one another with love and, and doing what we can, bearing the burden of individuals and things of that nature. And, of course, I know that we do uh, that very thing. We, we're concerned about other people. We're concerned about the ones that are sick among us. Uh, and, uh, you know, over and over we pray for them and, and do uh, anything that we can uh, for them. And so when we do that, uh, then uh, that is uh, fulfilling the Lord uh, telling us what to do as a servant, serving one another. And, of course, uh, he always used the Word of God. The Word of God was always used. He just didn't go and uh, say anything that wasn't uh, scriptural. And, and so we find he, he uh, 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 just uh, used the Word of God. And, of course, we need to use the Word of God. It's ours, and it's there, and we need to read it. We need to come, become familiar with it, and we need to apply it uh, to our own lives, our, our, and especially uh, to our daily walk. Uh, you know, uh, cleaning your feet, and that has to do a washing, and that, you will remember, we mentioned the washing uh, represents the Word of God. You are clean through the word, as the Bible tells us. And so it's a daily thing that we need our feet washed after uh, going through this old world and uh, doing the things of the world. We just need a, a daily cleansing as we walk through this old life. And, and that's important uh, to uh, come before the Lord and asking him for forgiveness, and, and certainly he will. And of course, uh, you know, I, I, would, uh, I looked at this verse and I said, this is what we need. And that is found in Luke. If you turn back into the book of Luke, uh, chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. And if you will notice, and this is important, I've, I believe, uh, what the Lord is giving to us here from the scriptures. In verse 30, it says, And Jesus answering, uh, saying, A certain man went down from Jericho to, from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, uh, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came unto a down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, which uh, when he was, uh, was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. And so here we see... Uh, that the religious crowd could do nothing for this man. That's always religion. Religion always talks, but they can do nothing at all. And so the, the priest and the Levite represented a religion, and they, they couldn't do anything. And then we see that in uh, the Bible says uh, in verse 33, but a certain Samaritan, a certain Samaritan. Why did the Lord use a Samaritan uh, as an illustration? And, of course, the Samaritan illustrates the Lord. That's what he is trying to get across. Now, how does he do that? Well, for one thing, the Samaritans were hated by the Jewish people. They could not stand him. Isn't that so that we found out in the book of John uh, that the Jews hated the Lord Jesus Christ. They wanted him put to death at every opportunity they could. And, and of course, one day they will. But here is a, a Samaritan, uh, hated by the Jewish people. And you'll remember, I think maybe in John chapter 4, uh, somewhere around there, uh, where that uh, 
Jesus made the statement, I must go through Samaria. I must go through Samaria. And, of course, the disciples could not understand that. Now, why in the world would a Jew want to go to Samaria? Samaria. Uh, and, and, of course, uh, we know that they avoided that area altogether. They would not. But Jesus went to Samaria. And, of course, he saw uh, the Samaritan woman at the well. She got saved. Other Samaritans got saved. But still, they wouldn't have anything to do with the Lord. And a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came whether, whether he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Verse 34, and went to him, bound up uh, his uh, wounds, uh, pouring oil in oil and wine, and setting him as his own beast, and uh, brought him to uh, an, inn, uh, an inn and took care of him. And then listen to this. On the, on the, on the morrow of when he departed, he took out two pence and gave it to them, uh, uh, to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whensoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Uh, and then in verse 36, which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among thieves. And then in verse uh, 34, uh, 37, and he said, he that showeth mercy on him, then, then said Jesus unto them, go and do likewise. And so he gives them a, a perfect illustration of what they needed to be doing. Uh, they did not need to just bypass the one that was in need, but to do something for the individual. And, of course, that's bearing one another's burden and different things of that, of, of that nature. And so we see that the, uh, and, and, uh, uh, the uh, Levite and the uh, priest representing uh, the uh, Jew, uh, Jewish religion, I guess you could say, at that particular time, a modern-day religion does about the same thing. Uh, and then, of course, we see uh, this is a great example of uh, what Christianity can do for individuals that are in need. And, of course, there's a, this world needs the Lord Jesus Christ. They need the Lord Jesus Christ. And so everybody... Uh, needs the Lord that is not saved. And so we can become a servant and go to them and tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, this is Christianity, what we just looked at in Luke chapter 10, uh, these verses scripture uh, and from the word of God. And then notice, if you will, in verse 16, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sends him. And so, first of all, we see verily, verily. And we've seen that before, and even in other, uh, other gospels, we see where the Lord spoke, and he said, verily, verily. And, and what the Lord is saying, what I am going to tell you now is important, is important for you, uh, disciples, to know and understand. You need to know this, and he says, uh, said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sends him. And so the Lord give him an example of becoming a servant. And if the, the greater or uh, the master uh, would humble himself, then they needed to do the very same thing. Uh, he said, the, uh, the servant is not greater than his Lord. And that is so true. Uh, the Lord is, is greater than we. But if he would humble himself, and then, of course, uh, the Bible tells us, that puts him and us on the same level. 
we are on the same level. Uh, and, of course, uh, look at John chapter 15, if you will, and verse 20 uh, and 21, uh, where it, that it says, Neither I pray for these alone, uh, 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 them al alone, but them also which uh, shall uh, believe on me through their word. And then in verse 21, that they all may be one as thou, Father, have art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, uh, sent me. And so uh, here we find that these uh, verses of Scripture in John chapter, uh, I should be in John chapter 15, and, and I'm sorry I got in 17, but it says there in verse 20, uh, it says, and I'm sorry about that, Remember the words that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will all... Uh, uh, they will also persecute you. Uh, and, of course, the Bible telling us here very clearly in verse 20, they'll persecute you. And, and then, of course, uh, it says, it goes on to say, if they have kept my word, my saying, they will keep your, uh, yours also. And all these things they will, uh, will they do unto you for my name's sake, because... They know not him that sent me. Now, what was the Lord saying here in this verse of Scripture? He says, we become the same level. We're on the same level. And he gives the illustration of there, uh, that uh, where the simple uh, wording is. Uh, uh, it says, uh, they have persecuted me. They will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. And so he is putting the, uh, on the same level as he is. If they're going to persecute me, they're going to persecute you. Being on the same level. Uh, and, and, of course, that's what the Lord was teaching his disciples about uh, doing what the Lord would have him to do. Uh, and being a servant as he was a servant is not greater than the master at all, uh, but the Bible telling us very clearly uh, that we need uh, to realize that we're on equal ground. If the, what, the Lord, uh, what the world is doing to our Lord, they'll do it unto us. And over and over in Scripture, you'll see that truth brought out. And we, as a servant, we're on equal ground with him, and they're going to persecute us as well as they persecuted him. And so uh, we'll look at verse uh, 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 17 next week. Uh, and so uh, just keep in mind and asking the Lord to help you uh, to realize what is being said here and done. Uh, and, and we'll uh, become a better servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what he is trying to get the disciples to do. Be a better servant humbling himself and different things like that. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the word of God. And Lord, uh, we pray that you would give us understanding of scriptures. And Lord, your will will be done in every heart and every life this morning. And Lord, we just pray that you would bless uh, the word of God uh, and bless the morning service, for we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you're dismissed.